Hi, I'm William Huber, and I'm a PhD student here at uh, UCSD in the Visual Arts Department. And my research is centered around what I call soft authorship, which is a problem of the collective and distributed authorship of software-based work. The term soft authorship has for me two connotations. First is the role of software itself in creating and representing the workflow, the software production chain, and also the malleability, elusiveness, and the dissemination, the softness, of creative authority in the software-based uh, cultural production. I wanted to engage in close readings of large-scale Gesamtkunstwerk video games, I became drawn to what I felt was an unworked question of authorship. The problem of the author has been generally dormant in the humanities since the late 1960s, when Roland Barthes discussed the death of the author as a matter for critical concern, and Foucault elaborated his own description of the historical mobilization of the author function. While well, I think that Barth's critique of the intentional fallacy remains valid, I think that uh, this period of massively multi-author production obliges us to ask just who or what articulates these elaborate software-based systems of representation. If cognitive scientists like Ed Hutchins can identify processes such as the navigation of ships as distributed cognition, irreducible to the mental activities of any of its constituents and executed in networks of human actors and the artifacts that they use to perform them, then we can start to consider a distributed aesthetic cognition working in the collective production of cultural software. Recent and contemporary video game uh, production remains in the foreground of my research, although I am also examining certain other software projects, particularly open source ones. The production of, soft, of video games involves a complicated set of aesthetic concerns while the scale of video game production has grown to an extent outstripping most other forms of software development. Video games are born digital, while other practices such as writing, graphic design, architecture, and music have become heavily reliant on software. Video games are constituted by software-implemented, rule-based systems of behaviors, representations, and simulations. The practice of making video games, in material terms, is the creation of software and involves programming. The growth of video game complexity also echoes that of the complexity of software projects in general. In 1976, David Crane developed the game Pitfall for Activision. As an Atari VCS game, the code for Pitfall had to fit within 4,000 bytes, which is less than the character count for the transcript of one of these presentations. The production of Pitfall took about 20 minutes of game design time, supposedly on the back of a napkin, and about 1,000 hours of programming and assembly. Crane was responsible for all elements of software production, although not, of course, for the manufacture, marketing, and distribution of the cartridges. And it was, in fact, the question of authorial credit and remuneration that motivated Crane and three other programmers from Atari, uh, which had conceived of video game programming largely as an adjunct to the sale of video game hardware, to form Activision, the publishers of Plitfall. Post-structuralist critiques of authorship aside, this historical moment of the designer and programmer as author and artist doesn't seem to trouble the notions of authorship which implicitly inform even critical uh, models of interpretation. Current video game production now scales to hundreds of people and considerably more if one accounts for the labor required to produce libraries and toolkits and other elements of programming, asset creation, and support. Indeed, one could view certain so-called global business relations as encapsulated labor. It is these larger scale productions which capture my interest. Each of these projects involves nested hierarchies of labor, delegations of creative decision making, iterative methods of self critique, and actor networks of human and non human agency. Orson Welles is supposed to have observed that a poet needs a pen, a painter a brush, and a filmmaker an army. The problem of collective production was brought up in film in the 1950s as auteur theorists sought to identify the director as a legal and ethical center of production, and thus to enjoy a certain measure of autonomy from the studios. Incidentally, I invite everyone to look at US patent number 6972828, which is a method and system for preserving the creative intent within a motion picture production chain. In mainstream and Hollywood film production, we see the same roles that have been given, certain roles have been given authorial uh, stature, direction, writing, cinematography, editing, and to a certain extent, acting. 
What is notable about these different roles is how materially and performatively distinct they are from each other and how the original production tools maintain and accentuate the division of work roles. One cannot easily write a script with a camera. The workflow of cinema has produced roles which now have political and institutional durability. Software softens the material enforcement of these institutionally determined roles in one's non-digital production chains. However, there is a countervailing momentum in software native production practices. If in the creation of video games and other software native work, software creates and manages workflow, both producing and reproducing the division of labor and the delineation of work roles. To an outside observer, the practices of making 3D models, designing characters, programming physics behaviors, authoring artificial intelligences, designing levels, and the generation of other work assets largely resemble each other at the scale of the working body. In most cases, with a couple exceptions, we would generally see a body sitting at a screen, or perhaps two screens, typing at a keyboard, etc. Looking at the monitor, however, we'd find software workspaces that indicated different positions on the production chain and differential and graded access to the assets of work. The work involved will almost without exception be a component of a network-enabled workflow. Components of this workflow will resurface at substantial distances of time and space from each other, uh, and re winding up in localization teams and production teams, which may be thousands of miles and several national borders away. For example, over 400 people are credited with the development of the 2006 video game Final Fantasy XII, developed by uh, Japan-based Square Enix Incorporated. 70% of the credited workforce is assigned uh, a role in art production, 20% to game design, and 10% to engineering. In addition to using industry standard tools like Maya, Softimaj, Photoshop, etc., the team used uh, in-house developed tools, plugins, and add-ons, which reflected the specific workflow involved in producing the game. In a recent presentation at the Games Developer Conference in 2008, the coordinator for programming, okay, one minute, uh, uh, for Final Fantasy XII, Taku Murata described the requirement that new tools being developed for future cross-work platform development foreground, quote, a detailed division of work. This call for software to create well-defined production roles was accompanied by a need for tools that reflected the aesthetic priorities of Square Enix's artistic directors. Yeah. So, the soft authorship is more than just the creation of, author, of software or the use of software to produce cultural artifacts or texts. It is the softening of the function of the author and its dissemination through extended production chains and across organizations. It is also the provisional stabilization of these roles within the production chains. My research will involve culling through the residual material of the software development process, not just the design documents, but also source management and versioning software logs. Uh, manage, uh, messaging threads, email threads, marketing materials, etc. Having worked for some years in the software industry, I have some educated guesses about the types of flows and circulations I'm going to find. But generally, my approach is going to be dictated by the guidelines set up by Bruno Latour which, to allow the networks of practice to reveal their own ontologies. <laughs>